many journalists who saw Taboo after it opened wonder why there was such vitriol toward it. The West Sider wrote, Taboo is not for everybody. It is certainly not for the tourists that keep Broadway going. As for me, I loved it. I'd see it again, though I doubt it'll last much longer. <laughs> Hashtag pass for the being kind of drink. Uh, one of the main issues people brought up was that the show was about too many people and too much. As the New Yorker, New York Observer wrote, it veers off suddenly into someone else's life during the urinal scene. <laughs> Capital urinal scene. Uh, they also really liked using some puns in all of the headlines. So puns. Oh. Um, there was also this weird headline, which is about Kevin Klein as Falstaff, but inexplicably it's about Taboo, so that's <laughs> Um, Taboo opened during uh, the season of Avenue Q, Wicked, Carolina Change, and Boy From Oz. When award season rolled around, it was nominated for five awards and won zero. Uh, the cast recording has lived on, however, and made many fall in love with the show. It's so good. Get it. Immediately. Um, it was dedicated to all those who believed and all those who didn't. Yeah. <laughs> In Taboo, Sarah Uriarte Berry played an artist named Nicola who married George. Newsday called her performance perfection. Here to speak about and sing from Taboo, we're trying, we can't pronounce her middle name as hard as we try, Sarah, Sarah Uriarte Berry. <laughs> Uriarte, everybody, Uriarte. 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 Thank you. Okay, now I know. For years I said Uriarte, and my husband was like, what are you doing that for? It's a cool name. Say Uriarte, so it's Uriarte. All right, so, um, I, oh, okay. I have fear of speaking, so I'm going to do my best. I'm supposed to tell a story. Um, yes, Taboo was crazy. It was a very, very strange experience, but I thought I would tell you just sort of my experience with the show, uh, with my perspective of being a wife and a mommy and a woman and a performer. Um, I first came to New York playing Eponine in Les Miserables, and then I played Belle in Beauty and the Beast, and I played Betty Schaefer in Sunset Boulevard, and I played Miss Dorothy in um, Thoroughly Modern Millie. So everything I did was ingenues and singing soprano and all of a sudden I get this tab taboo audition and I was auditioning to play a real life person, Nicola Bateman, who is British and she's a skinny, 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 substance abusing club waif um, who was married, it was actually Lee Bowery who she was married to. Lee Bowery was this really like crazy performance artist in London in the pop, uh, funk, music, art scene in London uh, in the 1980s. Um, so I was like, all right, well, if I would be playing opposite Boy George, cool, and Rosie O'Donnell's a producer, awesome. So I went to the audition, and I never heard anything. So I went, and I got pregnant. Um, <laughs> and when I was nine months pregnant, I got a call back. <laughs> pounds and I'm auditioning for the skinny little drug abusing club waif. I was like, oh Jesus, God, what am I gonna do? So I took, I had this photo on my fridge of me in a bikini after I had Montezuma's Revenge in Mexico and I was like super skinny. So I took the picture to my audition and I put it on the table in front of the creative team and I said, I can totally look like that. Probably like four weeks after I have the baby. <laughs> Just dumb. No idea. And so they, they're like, okay. So I, I did my audition, like with my big old belly, you know. And then I, they said, okay, you're gonna ha you have to have one more callback for George because George is coming from London next week. I'm like, okay. Well, I had the baby. Oops. So I had the baby, and they said, well, you have to come in two days after I had the baby. I was like, oh God. Oh God. So my husband took me, I was huge and swollen still. I couldn't even wear shoes, literally couldn't wear shoes. I was wearing his flip flops and I shuffled in and they looked at me and George was like, I can't believe you're here. And Rosie said, please don't belt, don't belt. I don't want your uterus falling on the floor. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. So then they called, they called me on the way home and they're like, you got the job, you got the job. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So, so then I was so excited. I got the job and I, they, uh, we had like a little, uh, what's it called? A, a designer workshop before the actual production. And I found out that I have this 
amazing ballad, which I was like, I know how to do that, because I sang on my own. And then they said, and you have this pop funk song with riffing. And I was like, oh, well, I don't riff. And I don't sing funk. And I'm a little nervous about that. And then they said, and your act one costume while you're wearing, the, while you're singing the pop funk song is a swimming costume. I was like, but I just have a baby. And they said, in act two, you are going to be birthed by George wearing a body stocking with crystals on your titties. I said, what, 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 wait, 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 say all that again, say all that again. And they said, okay, so in act one, while you're singing your fuck song, you're wearing a swimming costume with a hat, which is that. And I was like, I need tights, I need tights with my swimming costume, I need, oh, I had a baby. So then they said, all right, and in act two, George is going to be sitting on a tuffet. He's sitting on a tuffet. You're hiding in the tuffet under his bum. So I was like, under his butt for this big long scene, like, like curled in a ball. And then they said at a specific time, he's going to act like he's having contractions. He's going to birth you. And I had to crawl up from his butt in a nude body stocking with crystals here, here, and here. It was horrifying, but it was fun. It was crazy. So, um, but what made it really, really, really all worth it was Rosie's unbelievable support and generosity toward me as a mother. Uh, she let me have my baby at all of the rehearsals in a baby Bjorn if I wanted, like literally doing the show with Madeline going, you know, in a Bjorn. Um, she gave me uh, a stipend so I could hire a nanny. She rented an extra room in the rehearsal hall so that I could have a little playpen and my husband would sit writing and I would breastfeed her and I would run back and I would do the rehearsal and I would breastfeed her and I'd go back to the rehearsal. I mean, she was just like, you know what? I'm okay, do your thing, you're a mom. You're a mom first. It was amazing. So actually, yes, thank you. I sort of want to dedicate this with everything happening to women who support women in the arts. men like my husband who also support women in the arts. Alright, so this is my funk song. Okay, go. <laughs> You crush my spirit and you kill my vanity and I run. 